Her uncle was all confused about the whole smoke problem that George had to explain to Parenkel so many times that they had to get out of the house. Why don't you turn on your the water sprayers? You know, the ones from the ceiling? Parenkel added. George said, listen, I know it's my house, but if we don't evacuate now, we'll be in big danger. So let's go. And they both were on their way to the front door, but it was locked. George tried so many times to open it, but he pulled the doorknob so hard it came off. Perico looked at him with a mad expression. What do we do now, sir? She asked. George looked around. The only one that was always unlocked was the back door. Follow me, George said to Perico, and they ran toward the back door. The only problem was most back doors were are always inside kitchens and that is where all of the smoke was. Once they were outside, they went through the fence and into the truck. When they got to the when they got in the truck, George asked, You okay? Parenkle nodded. Okay, good. Now tell me who and what you are. Parenkel cleared her throat and said, <clears throat> I'm an alicorn peacemaker. George asked, Can you turn into a human? Parenkel said, Well, no. The magic I have, the magic, I have trouble controlling it. Oh. George said. George said, Well, I'm George. Parenko pointed a huff to her chest and said, Parenko Snow. George repeated Parenko's name twice and asked in, in serious tone, Okay, so what were you doing in my kitchen and why. Parenkle gave him the silent treatment. Parenkle sighed and said, I can't leave here. George asked, can't or won't? I can't. And George said nothing. After a while, George's phone began to ring. Franco said, unknown number, no answer. But George did not stop to think, and he answered the phone. Franco started to mutter stuff. Hello? George asked. A deep, mean voice answered. Hello. I was wondering... I was wanting to know if you've heard about, and George put him on speaker. Parenko Snow! And once George and Parenko heard that name, George pretended that he didn't know or has not seen Parenko Snow. Well, if you do find her, let me know. Bye! And George hung up. Parenko and George looked at each other, and then George said, Oh, guess I shouldn't have answered, huh? Parenko didn't look at him and, or even answer to him, but she said, Oh, great! Now I'm really busted! Parenko gasped and said, <laughs> I might not even see my parents again. Parenko, George stopped for a minute and then said, 
Okay, look. I know it's bad, but I might have. I know. I might know a place to spend the night. Panko asked, "Where?" We are going to a hotel," George said. Panko screamed excitedly. Listen, I know you're excited, but you can do whatever you want in your head. And Panko and George made a deal. And they both went down to the city to go to the hotel for the night. There were good news and bad news. Good news. George knew which hotel to go to. Bad news. There was a lot of there was a lot and I mean a lot of traffic. Pangle grunted. Ugh. When are we going to get there? She asked. When this traffic passes, George said. Once they found the hotel, it was kind of hard for George to read the. Name of the hotel. Panko laughed. <laughs> Bobo can't read Spanish. I'll show you. What is this? The the name of the hotel was called Casa, and that means house in Spanish. And then. The, and then it said Blanca, which obviously means white. Parenko gasped. <gasps> House White is what the hotel's name is. If you turn it around, it's White House. Oh. My. Good Lord, we are saved! Woohoo! Woohoo! Come on, Bobo, our hotel awaits. And they both went inside. And George laughed. A lady at front desk, at the front desk, greeted and welcomed them inside the hotel. Parenko teleported a pair of sunglasses and George did all the talking. What's your fake name? George asked. Parenko thought for a minute and whispered, Monica. George signed the clipboard and they were off. And they had to take the elevator because the stairs were out of order. And they had a good conversation. 